Okay. Hello, everybody. I'm going to, uh, uh, Happy New Year. <laughs> going to be a much better year. I just know it. I'm going to ask that everyone mutes themselves um, while I'm demonstrating, and then I will say, unmute, please, and then you can go up and unmute, and that should solve the problem that Bonnie was talking about, which is losing my picture every once in a while, which I wouldn't care, but I'm assuming that she does. So there you go. Um, today is chicken and dumpling day. And I really, this is the recipe that I really like. Um, I'm going to, it, it's a comfort food. It's, it's, easy. Oh, here comes Barry. Uh, it's very easy. Uh, I think you will really enjoy it. And, and I like it because you can get the parts done in advance. You know, it takes a little bit, but you, it bro I've broken it into parts and the parts can be done in advance, like I said, put in the fridge and then when you assemble it, it takes maybe 20 minutes to assemble it all together. And it's primo, it's really good, good. So we are, I'm going to talk first about the chicken. I had some frozen chicken pieces in the, in the freezer in the back and uh, pulled them out a uh, couple of legs, a couple of breasts. Um, you can use all legs, all breasts. One of the things, one of the things that I like about the way I do this is that it the breast is not going to get overcooked if the legs are done. What you do is um, you throw them into a pot with some water. Um, you and a, an onion, celery, um, carrots, and cook them in a broth. In in it could be water. You could cook them in a broth, and then until they're just barely done. And since they're in pieces, you can take the breasts out early. You can cook the the thighs a little longer. And then you cut them into, for this, you would cut them into big chunks, like this size, you know, fairly large. Um, now, if you don't want to start with raw chicken, which who has, who necessarily wants to do that, use a rotisserie chicken, cut it off. Um, use the bones to make a broth, cook those bones up in some water for eh, half an hour, and you've got a nice broth. If you don't wanna do a broth at all, that's why God made better than bouillon. <laughs> you, can, you can do that, you know. It's all about what's convenient for you. Now I made, I made homemade broth, and this is really very good. Well, the reason I like homemade broth is because you control how much salt goes in there. That's the, the major, and it really does taste better. So I cooked the chicken, then I threw the bones back in, cooked it for another, or simmered it for another half hour. I got this broth, I, uh, I measured it out, simmered it, reduced it by a cup, I think. And I have almost four cups, almost four cups for the this. Now, that's the chicken. You can do it the easy way with a rotisserie chicken. You can use, um, you can use chicken pieces, whatever you want. Um, I have my veggies, my veggies, 
And these are crisp. I, one of the problems that I find if, if you put it into the broth, now you're gonna be cooking that broth for 15 to 20 minutes with the chicken and the veggies in it. Um, you want the, the vegetables to be done, but not cooked to death. And I like it, I like to cook it like for 15 minutes, steam it. And this is just onions, carrots, and celery cut into good sized chunks. And you, you're all set. You, you stick it into a steamer, uh, put it on for, oh, 10, 15 minutes, turn it off, let it just sit there. It's perfectly fine. And then I'll be making the, the dumplings in a minute, but what else goes in there? Uh, a little bit of wine, a little bit of wine, uh, some butter, some flour, and, uh, and at the end, should you desire, you can put in frozen peas, you can put in frozen corn, you could put in frozen broccoli. If you hate peas, leave them out. Doesn't matter. Whatever's at the bottom of your, you know, your set. It's all, it's all up to you and what you want to, to do. And so, all right, so now it's about time to, um, for dinner, you're about half an hour out and you want to put it all together. Well, you, you're all set. So first I'm going to make the sauce and, and in my, so we have in, in a good size saucepan or a Dutch oven. This is what I cooked the chicken in. I just cleaned it up. The idea is that you, that I like to thicken it up without anything in there, mainly because it gives me a lot more control over it. So you have, oh, a quarter cup. And all you're making is a white sauce. And a little bit of flour. You melt the butter. And I had it in chunks just because it's a lot easier to do. And quicker. So you melt the butter, you're making a white sauce, basically. And this is more or less six tablespoons. And you want to cook this for until the flour turns a little bit brown. And I'm going to put some salt in here, mainly because my, my um, broth doesn't have any salt in it at all. You'll be adjusting for, for taste later but you start, start with it. Some herbs de Provence, because everything is better with herbs de Provence. Here we go. I, if 
you were making a white sauce, you would put in uh, milk at this point before the flour browns. But you're making a velote, velote? I don't know how to pronounce that. Velote sauce, you're putting in stock. And the stock can be stock of your own making or anything else, you know, anything you want. But this will thicken up, will thicken it up. Now you can see it's already beginning to change. And a little bit of pepper. Velote. Okay. That's how you say it. Here we go. You're cooking out the raw flour taste. If you just dumped it in immediately, it would taste pasty. You're you're just thickening it up without without that. And I'm gonna throw in a little garlic powder because I like garlic. Go. Now, Go. it's ever so slightly brown. And I'm going to pour in the stock and some wine because I can. And you're going to bring this to a boil and thicken it up. Already it looks good, but it's going to come to a boil. Okay, why don't you unmute yourselves while this is coming up to a boil? Any questions? No? Hi, Allison. It's so good to see you. Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> hey, Tina. Well, Hi. <laughs> well, um, this looks like a, a kind of a small portion. Would you double it if you were feeding like four people or? or no, it... I'm going to feed four people. It'll huh? be fine. I'm okay. going to feed four people. Okay. Um, Dina is here. Um, what's her? Uh, Ashley, who lives with me. Uh, and Diana is coming. So. This will be plenty. It doesn't look like much, but look at how it's thickening up. I would, if for four people, this is plenty, believe me. And if you don't believe me, that's okay. We will, it'll still work. You don't have to, you can double it, triple it. But watch what happens when I put, now it's lovely and thick and looking looking really quite creamy without any cream in it of course so now i'm going to put in the veggies and 
and the chicken. And suddenly it's not looking so small anymore. Is that okay? Now. You're right, it's looking bigger now. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of stuff in there. Okay, so we have this. Now I'm going to turn this down and start making Turn it to a nice simmer, and I'm going to start making the dumplings. And for veggies, veggies. All right. One of the things that I always, I like doing is making them a different way. I like making the dumplings a different way. By heating up, I'm gonna heat up the, this is the milk and the butter. So I'm going to the microwave and heat it up. And the dry ingredients couldn't be any simpler. I've got, Two cups of flour. One tablespoon or three teaspoons of baking powder. And a little less then a teaspoon. I said a half a teaspoon, but a little less than a teaspoon of, of salt. That's it. So we have, and I'm going to go get the, the warm milk now. Needs about 30 more seconds. I, it was a minute and it needs about 30 more seconds to melt all of the butter. So there are lots of ways of shaping the, a dumpling. You can cut them into strips. You can cut them, put them into little balls like matzo balls. These are not matzo balls, but they're, they've got the same idea that, that matzo balls have, and only you're just not making them like big, like matzo balls. Get. So I like using hot, it, you know, it should be hot for this, and I have no idea why, but I do like this recipe. Just putting hot milk in. And you just give it a stir until it's now. What do you do with them? Well, you can roll them out or roll pat, pat them out. You can cut them up like biscuits. Mm -hmm. You can roll them into balls. You can cut them into strips. I kind of don't cut them into biscuits. I, I do kind of like, this mm -hmm. 
I do this mainly because it's dead easy and it's just, you know, you don't have to worry about it. You just do it. You don't have to shape them or do anything weird. And it's okay if they're a little sticky, who cares? Because they're going to go into the boiling water anyway. And they're absolutely delicious. Don't spend a whole lot of time shaping them. I think the less that you shape them, the better they are. Um, they're kind of all puffy and ready to go. So what do you do with them? And this is why all everything is in big chunks. You put them on the top, just like this. If I had thought ahead, I would have gotten my bench scraper and put them on. But you're laying them basically on top of all of the big pieces of chicken. And you set your timer for I'm going to set it for 10 minutes. It might not, it might take a little longer than that, but about 10 minutes. And then you've got dinner <laughs> completely all set, ready for you. So if you want to um, unmute, easy, huh? My mother used to use a spoon and just dump them in that way. Take yeah. a spoon of the dough. Yeah, you can do it just the same way. Um, actually, I can scrape the bowl. Yeah, just dump them in. So I wouldn't lift the lid like I just did. 15 minutes. And it's really simple. Uh, it tastes very comforting. Um, and when that, that's done, before you serve it, you're going to throw in whatever frozen vegetables plus some lovely parsley, chopped parsley, which you can do as a garnish for when... Um, when you serve it. So there you go, there you are. It's pretty easy. Now, I wanted to say one other thing. If you take those vegetables and cut them into tiny little, tinier pieces, cut up the chicken into tinier little pieces and throw it in a pan with puff pastry on top, you have you have chicken pot pie. Same difference. It tastes wonderful. It's just you don't have you're you're put, topping it not with dumplings, but you're topping it with pie crust. You can also make it in a two crust pie or something like that. But this is exactly the same filling that I put into chicken pot pie. Also, you would before you served it you would and at the same time you put this in um you would put in the cream if you're using it now i'm not going to use cream today because da -da, i don't have any <laughs> i don't care <laughs> so um but it it's very easy to make 
and people always just really like it a lot. They they seem to like it like grandma used to make it. Well, I am grandma, but <laughs> <laughs> that kind of thing. So there you are. And I've got the timer going for when we, um, for 10 minutes, I'm gonna show you what it looks like when it comes out, but we have time to talk. So any questions? I want some. <laughs> Barry, I can't help you. You're in Santa Cruz. <laughs> no. And so it looks so good though. Mm -hmm. And it smells delightful, right, Dina? Yes, it does. Yeah, it smells really good. Hi, Dina. Uh, was, it was super easy to get ready. I just had to set timers to make me remember that I had something on. And, and since I don't leave the house, yeah. it's easy to remember, you know, if you set timers. So once you've covered the top, and you and you have some a little bit of extra left over. Can you just throw it in? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> it doesn't matter. You're you're steaming those dumplings. You know. So is there a lid on the pot or no? Oh yes. Okay. Yeah. There's a lid on that pot. Put the, bring it up to a boil. It's steaming those those dumplings. Got it. So, so how is the year starting for you guys? Huh. Eh. <laughs> There's not much difference from last year right now. Right. <laughs> I thought we were going to get away from the news, uh, political news, but it's <laughs> not happening. <laughs> no. I want him to go away. Yeah. I just, you know, just, you know. Goodbye. Yeah, well, maybe he will. Well, I hope so. Yeah. But yeah, yesterday was not a, was, was kind of horrifying. And, you know, somebody said they had their seven day free trial for this year. And they're, <laughs> they're, they're canceling. Right. Yeah. For 2020. <laughs> but um i'm hoping i've got high hopes oh get, no kitten <laughs> i want to see clyde and jake <laughs> my god this kitten is okay the 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 computer was on a box and it got into the back of the box <laughs> on the stool and he's he's like moving it around, <laughs> like ah. <laughs> so, how are Clyde and Jake doing? Clyde and Jake are doing great. They are evil domestic terrorists. <laughs> they will get into boxes. They will get into uh, bookshelves. Get behind the books. Knock the books down. Uh, they almost knocked the computer off the dining room table. I just, they, they are really funny and lovely and I adore them, but man, are they a <laughs> handful. <laughs> you getting big? They're, oh, let me get him. Since I don't have to touch him. There's Jake. Aww. Oh, he's pretty. He's a pretty one. Oh, yeah. Okay, go. But, <laughs> but he's he's definitely large, and his brother is even larger. Mm. So now now they need to start earning their keep. <laughs> what are they like my chickens who are not earning their keep? They're they're not laying eggs these days. Hmm. Winter. Too cold. What? Too cold for eggs. Right? 
I'm sorry? Is it too cold for chickens to lay eggs? Yes. Yeah. Oh. yeah. It's too cold and the days are too short. Mm. They, they need a certain uh, amount of daylight before they will lay eggs. Mm. And I could put a put something up in the in the um, chicken coop, but seriously, I'm not, you know, I'm not doing that. So <laughs> I'd have to actually have electricity in a chicken coop. I'm not doing it. <laughs> How's peaches? Peaches is fine. Peaches is my bunny. And peaches is fine. She's like not eating as much as she should, I, but she really likes carrots. So she's getting a lot of carrots. Froze, the ones that were in my fridge that were frozen. Frozen carrots are bizarre looking, but <laughs> they're really strange. It's like there's water inside that gets frozen inside the carrot and then it splits the carrot. Really strange. But yeah. So how far are you are you going, Carrie? How how are you at up with me on this recipe? Yeah. yeah. So we've got almost no time left. So I'm gonna there we go. Let's take a look. little puff balls. I don't think, I think they need about five minutes more. This is what they look, yeah, I think about five more minutes. So, so um, you, uh, let's see. So let's, um, well, I'll, let's, I'll wrap this up first, shall I? And we'll, we'll talk about next week. Um, so we've got this is what they look like. We're going to be when I serve them, I'm going to put in the the parsley and the frozen peas. It's an absolutely scrumptious winter dish. It's wonderful. And I hope you enjoy it very much. I really like it. So there you have it. Um, Carrie, thank you very much. And I'll see you next week. All right. Now, un.